Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. Today's problem is non-decreasing array. Given an array nums with n integers, your task is to check if it could become non-decreasing by modifying at most one element. All non-decreasing means is it's sorted in ascending order. Now we define an array is non-decreasing if nums i is less or equal to nums i plus one, and this holds for every i such that i is in between zero and n minus two. The reason why it's n minus two is because we're looking at i plus one, but we can change that. We can um, say i minus one as well, uh, starting at one to n minus one. Uh, okay, so at first glance, this seems fairly simple. We could just iterate down our array and check to see how many of these i to i plus ones uh, hold this condition, where the i is less or equal to i plus one. But the issue with that is, say that we had like five, four, six, something like this. Uh, technically, if we were to count up how many are different, we can see like this is fine, this is fine, this is not fine, but this is fine, right? So in that case, that would kind of signify, oh, we only have one to change here. We can make this whatever, six, and that should make it sorted, but it doesn't, right? Because this last one here. Um, so to do this, what I'm going to do is starting at the second element, I am going to look backwards and keep track of the, actually not starting at the second element, basically I'm just going to iterate down the, all the numbers here and keep track of the max number. So say that this was 2, I'll keep track of what, what, what was the max? So here with 4, start with 4 and then 5, is this number greater or equal to the max that we have so far? And if it is, then it's fine, we just skip. Now, as soon as we find that it's not greater or equal to the max that we have so far, which is six, then we're going to increment our counter. We'll say, oh, there's at least one that we need to change. And then we move on to here and it'll say, well, it's still uh, less than six. So that, that's two. We have to change two. So therefore, this is not something that we can modify by just switching one number. So here's what I'll do. Uh, first, going to initialize the n to equal length of nums and I'll have a min and max. Well, okay, getting ahead of myself, we'll start with just the max. And this will just be a float starting with the lowest possible number with negative infinity. Now, I need to keep track of, um, say, the numbers that we have so far. So we'll just call this n. We'll have n equals zero. For i in range of n, let's check to see if if nums i is less than our max so far, we are going to increase our counter. Okay, and we'll set our max again every single time. Say max of max and nums i. And at the very end, we want to see if, hey, is this num um, less or equal to 1? Because if it's less or equal to 1, that means this can be changed by uh, just changing one number. But there is an edge case. Say that we had number like 100, and then one, two, three, four, something like this. Well, if I did this, this would start off by saying, okay, 100 is the max, and now we have like four numbers that we have to change. But technically we don't, right? We only need to change this one. So to take care of that, I'm also gonna move backwards and uh, do the opposite way, just to take care of that edge case. What I'll do is also keep track of the min, this will be starting with infinite, and we'll say this is m, and we'll do the same algorithm, but we'll do it backwards. We'll say uh, 4i in range of n minus 1 minus 1 minus 1, if nums dot i, uh, if it's greater than the min so far, oops, then we're going to increase our m, and the min will be the min of min and nums i. So let me, let me make sure I'm getting this right here. It's less than the max so far. And if we're going min, nums dot i. Um, So if we had 100, 1, 2, 3, start here, the min would be 3, and this would be 
times is greater. It's not going to be greater, right? So we go down. So yeah. So that should be right. Now all we need to do here is say m is also less or equal to one. So if any of these is false, then we have to return false, right? Okay. So let's make sure that this is working. Okay. So let's submit that. All right. There we go. Accepted. So this is not the best algorithm because we make two passes. It's still O of n time, um, but you could write some a little bit more complex algorithms to make it in one pass O of n. But honestly, overall, you don't save that much time. So uh, I think this is much more understandable to me. So I'm going to just stay with this one. Uh, the other, so like I looked at some other solutions, which got a little complicated. Um, really, I think it overly complicated. So um, I think this is good enough even though it's not the best. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.